Good morning, friends, and welcome to Thursday Thyroid Talks, hosted by yours truly, Sarah Lohman. I'm here to provide you with real life experiences from thyroid warriors who have been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, Graves, and or Hashimoto's thyroiditis. This series is my way of giving back to the thyroid community in order to help combat the loneliness and isolation that so many of you are feeling. I provide that support by holding space for women from the thyroid community who volunteer to share their thyroid journeys. I'm hoping this series will help women struggling with their health daily by bringing an awareness and change to how they are being viewed and treated. Today's featured warrior is Nicole. Nicole's story really spoke to me when we were DMing each other on Instagram, and I just knew she had to share with you what she's been through. She has been very, very powerful for me to talk to you, and I absolutely know that you're going to really resonate with her journey as well as I will. So let's give a big welcome to Nicole. IV to do the casket. Sorry. Yeah. So, um, so it just, it really just started for me just feeling like I was having anxiety. I went to the hospital, the nurses asked me, you know, a ton of questions and I didn't have any thyroid history in my family. I didn't have any, um, like heart, heart attack history or heart disease history. So I didn't feel the need at that time to get a CAT scan. And then they kept coming in, you know, it was like, okay, well, your blood, you know, pressure has gone down because my blood pressure was really high when I went in. And they said they had only given me like Advil or something to lower my blood pressure. And then they would release me. So they said, okay, hey, you know, we, you want to, we're going to do an ultrasound and, you know, an x ray, CAT scan, or I'm sorry, not an ultrasound, but an x ray and a CAT scan. And I said, well, you know, I don't need all that because, you know, you don't, you know, I had already had a little bit of knowledge about things that can happen, you know, and I just don't like hospitals. Mm -hmm. So I said, um, no, it's fine. You know, I don't, I don't want to do a CAT scan today, you know, and they came, then the, the doctor and two nurses came basically to manipulate me into the, you know, into a little corner. And they're like, well, do you have children? And I said, yes, I have three. Well, what do you want to know if you're having a heart attack or, you know, a brain aneurysm? And I'm like, okay, well, yeah, I do want to know, you know, if my if my heart rate is, if my um, blood pressure is, is at 190, and that's pretty high. So um, we get back there, I do the CAT scan, and I feel like I almost immediately felt something was off. I got, um, you know, they administered the IV uh, for the CAT scan, the radioactive iodine, and I just got sick. Mm. I, you know, I started to um, feel the, uh, like a weird sensation in my throat. I, you know, of course you feel like you have to urinate when they give it to you. Mm. And then I felt um, nauseous to where, you know, I started to throw up. And so I just felt like, okay, this isn't right. So like, then when I, like you know, poisoned you. Like yeah. You poisoned? Yeah. I felt, oh. it's like, I felt it like, Wow. The universe is so connected with my body that it could be off balance, just a little bit or something happening and I'll feel it. So, um, I, you know, I threw up, they gave me the, the pan to, to vomit in and okay, it's fine. You know, they didn't tell me like drink lots of water after this radioactive iodine to make sure that you push it out of your system. So it doesn't cause any DNA to mutate. You know, they didn't tell me anything. They just um, sent me home and I got the results. Everything said nothing was there. It was unremarkable. I didn't have, it says that my thorax, unremarkable, my brain, you know, everything was fine. So they basically chalked it up to you were having an anxiety attack. Now that your blood pressure has gone down to 130, you can go home. Hmm. So a few weeks later, I was in the car with my husband and, um, I don't know why I was touching my neck. I just felt it. I just touched my neck and I said, you know, honey, feel this. It's a, it's something here. And he's like, you know, yeah, you're right. It is something there. I'm like, this wasn't there, you know, when I went to the hospital. And um, so I started going to my primary care physician and I told her, and I told her also like what I had looked up 
as far as um, nodules at that time, I didn't know what a thyroid was, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of people don't, yeah. they don't realize how important your butterfly is until you are in the process of losing it. Yeah. Um, so whenever I um, made the first appointment, I went in, I said, you know, it's something she, she did a check. No, I feel some lymph nodes swollen. But it feels like that on both sides. She was, you know, very gent, you know, very gentle. She was, you know, and I'm like, okay, she can't really feel what I'm feeling because I don't feel like she's barely touching me. Mm. And so she says, uh, you know, she got down. Okay, yeah, I do feel something small here. You know, um, you know, it's very common with your age, and you know, we'll just keep an eye on it. So she sent me back home, and then a few weeks later, I made another appointment. Well, what do you need to come in for? Well, because I feel a second nodule. Oh my so God. I went in and I said, um, I feel something else here and it's larger. And, um, you know, I remember her talking to me about some things and she goes, you know, well, what makes you ask all these questions? And, um, and I said, well, because when I Googled it, it showed, you know, my eyes, I mean, they're not like that now. I still have now I have hypothyroid eyes but at that time I had hyper so it was like I had the you know my eye like look kind of crazy the bulging yeah yeah I had the like what they call them the Betty Davis eyes out. yeah mm -hmm. so um um and again I was still losing this weight I had just I mean I had dropped down from 150 to 130 in the matter of months and, but before you knew it, I was at 120, you know, and then, you know, I started to just, you know, lose weight rapidly. My hair started thinning out and the edges and, you know, I just didn't feel normal. So I told her, I said, you know, I do feel a second nodule. She did the same check again. So I touched her hand, you know, to try to get her to feel exactly what I was feeling because she kept saying it was normal on both sides and it wasn't. Mm. So I said, look, you know, feel this. And she just yanked her hand back from me really fast as if I was like oh. infected with something, you know, and um, like she didn't, you know, she said, no, how about she just moved back? Hey, how about I'll just send you for an ultrasound? If you're, you know, if you're really concerned about it, I'll just send you for an ultrasound. And so I went for an ultrasound and um, during the ultrasound, they did see that they seen both nodules. Mm. The doctor, they never called me back. They never informed me that, you know, that the uh, radiologist informed them that there was in fact two nodules there and one was 2.4 centimeters. They never told you that? They never told me. So I caught, so I actually got my results from them and they said, yes, you know, you do need to get further, you know, examination for this. Wow. So I called the doctor's office and I said, was talking to the nurse and uh, it was a guy. And I said, well, you know, can I speak to doctor, you know, so-and-so? And, -so? and, I, and um, he says, well, you know, what do you need to talk to her about? I said, well, well, for one, I got my results back and you guys never let me know that there was a second nodule like I told her there was. And um, he said, um, okay, well, um, I, you know, I'll ha call you back. So he spoke to her where she then sent me a referral to an endocrinologist via email. Hmm. So she sent over, you know, the referral for me to go find an endocrinologist to get further examination. Never, she, you know, she never called me to speak to me on her own, never was any follow-up. And then after I um, found the endocrinologist, I made the appointment, which took a few months to get in. But I um, called back just to make an appointment where I can go be face to face with the, with the doctor. And they said, well, unfortunately, we don't accept your insurance anymore. You've been dropped as a patient here. So then I said, well, can I get my medical records? They would not let me obtain my medical records. It was like a big hassle. It was so weird. It, it was almost like it was it was connected, you know, like, yeah, it, it, it was, I could feel like it. Like you were flagged or something. Yeah, because um, 
the hospital that I went to, my doctor was connected to that physician, the hospital that I originally went to the, get the CAT scan for the anxiety. So the, she was a part of this hospital, hmm. you know? So it was almost like, okay, now after the CAT scan, I have a thyroid nodule that then turned into hyperthyroid that I was, um, that I actually balanced on my own. When I went to the endocrinologist and I spoke to her, she said, well, um, I'm assuming it's from, you know, the multiple CAT scans and ultrasounds. And then she went back and said she never said it. It was, it was like really, it was really sketchy. What? Like I, I had to like start. You blamed your growth of nodules on the actual CAT scan and the radiation basically? She did. Yes, she did. And maybe she was oh. too fast. And then when it came back, because, you know, they can't have lawsuits and have it followed back and coming back onto them and things like that. Uh -huh. So after um, she said, okay, I'll send you for a biopsy. The biopsy came back suspicious for thyroid carcinoma, papillary thyroid carcinoma. Mm -hmm. But um, um, before I even went for a biopsy, when I was in hyperthyroid, she put that I spontaneously normalized because I started to, you know, drink teas and herbs and do things, mm -hmm. you know, at, you know, with the research, with hy having hyperthyroid, I started researching, okay, mother's word, lemon balm, you know, ashwagandha, you know, like um, chamomile, you know, like bugleweed. There were so many things that I started researching. And then I started gaining the weight back. I started, mm. you know, my appetite was balancing. Um, I was getting sleep. I didn't have insomnia. Um, you know, it. that's why it was weird when it came back suspicious because before then she said she put in her notes that I spontaneously normalized. And I don't know if that's a flag with doc, with, you know, how doctors speak with one another to yeah. let people know, okay, she's into something holistic. Mm. so she was she called me in and she said I, she, I would like to know you know what all you're taking mm. but I'm like I'm just taking turmeric you know like <laughs> what have you been taking and she was like I'm interested in knowing like she wanted further detail on how my thyroid levels normalize from hyperthyroid and I started you know so I'm like okay <laughs> did, were you honest with her or did you um no uh, no. Okay. No, okay. I, I, you know, no, you, did you, so you got the vibe that it was kind of like not a good intention and that's why she wanted to know is what you're saying. Yeah. Well, my thoughts were, if you're a doctor, like, what would you like, why do you really need to know how I normalize? All you need to know is that I'm not in hyperthyroid. So I don't need Synthroid. Mm. You don't need to jump to medicate me because if I'm balancing out things, mm -hmm. you know, then there's no reason, you know, for me, if it's not prescription, you don't really care to know anyway. You're not an integrative medicine doctor. Everything is notated. Everything you put down with my connected to my name is going to be notated in any health, you know, medical system, my medical records and everything like that. Yeah. So well, you, I could definitely understand your hesitation because of the just the way they they treated you that whole time. I mean, wow, they really did multiple disservices to you. And, and that wasn't the end of it. And that's why I told you my journey was, wow. it was almost surreal, you know, because after she sent me for um, the biopsy and it came back suspicious, she then um, gave me a referral and I'm like, okay, well, what does this suspicious means? Because there was a lot of people who have gone under surgery and then they come back and they were negative for thyroid cancer and therefore, but they still have to live with these side effects and everything of being on Synthroid for the, or, you know, level thyroxine for the rest of their life, um, balancing diets or, you know, the mood swings or, you know, the temperament or, you know, everything that's connected to not having a fully functioning body mm -hmm. because it's a very important part of the body. Mm -hmm. Just like a car. If you're missing a part of the car, your car is not going to run, you know, properly. If you don't have the fuel injection cleaner, gas, you know, everything that you need or in, in every piece of it, it's not going to ever run the same. 
So before jumping to surgery, which is what they all want to jump to because they get, they make more money off of you when you have your thyroid removed, no matter what level of thyroid disease that you have, Mm -hmm. it's all cha-ching. So, you know, and then the prescription is forever. So that's a cha-ching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? So just being that I sat home and educated myself because I do have three kids and it's like, I have to fight for me. Mm -hmm. And these people are obviously in cahoots with each other because they were communicating behind my back unbeknownst to myself. And, you know, it was so many other things, like I said, not being able to obtain my medical records. And then when I received them, um, her notations about the fact that it was caused by... um, the CAT scan, you know, was changed. The verbiage was changed. Um, They added that I had thyroid cancer in my family, which was a complete lie. I had to go through like getting them to change my medical records and removing false data off of my medical records, you know. um, So uh, it, it was, it was very hard for me. It was, it felt like I was in the twilight zone. Um, and being that that is not where it had ended. Uh, so with her, I asked her, she wanted to send me to get the lymph node also biopsy. Mm-hmm. So when I went and got it biopsied, um, I told her, she said, how would you like to be informed? And I said, you know, if it's anything malignant or serious, please call me in and tell me face to face. She sent it through a text messaging system. Mm-hmm. So I didn't even get the fact that it was malignant cancer until later after the results that are after I've been calling them and calling them like, okay, yeah, my, you know, my results in, well, you know, doctor, you know, I don't know if we can say their names and stuff. I wouldn't. <laughs> okay. Well, she knows because I had to end up recording her and she was crying and, you know, she was apologizing and everything it was like a big thing she was telling me she was really sorry and had been praying for me okay hang on pause I mean I'm like my mind keeps getting blown so I have to like I'm still trying to ingest the fact that they manipulated you into a cat scan by using your children against you so um so you found out that you had cancer through a text but you weren't really told through a text and then you didn't really get told you had cancer until th- like months later and they knew? Um, like a oh, year later. Like, no, it was like a year later. Like, oh my gosh. What um, did the, how, how did the text sound? How for them to not like tell you? What was it? Was it just very can... vague or did they tell you everything was okay or? It, it said that, you know, the the biopsy results came back as malignant cancer for papillary thyroid carcinoma. We went back and forth because in the messaging system, I started cussing her out. I was like, who the hell are you to, to tell me that I have cancer through a text message? Wow. Like what type of person? I told her, I said, yeah. you're a piece. I, I was, I went completely off. I said, you're a piece of shit, doctor. She was going back and forth with me. Like, if you're gonna have this verbiage and we don't have to discuss anything. And I said, that's fine. Cause I'll come and talk to you in person. Wow. You know, and that's when she was crying. When I showed up to the doctor's clinic, she had already had security close the door as I was at the front counter to check in and said, she knows, I said, she's, she knows what I'm here to talk to her about. And so the security guard, the security or police officer or whatever he was came out there. And I, it was, I recorded it as I walked in, she just started crying. I'm so sorry. I've been praying for you. I'm really sorry that that, like I recorded it, like the, the ground, you know, and I let her know, like, yeah, I'm, I'm recording me, you know, speak to you. So she knew how much, how much was this a year after that text or was it pretty close? No, it was pretty close to the text of having malignant cancer, but it was a year after already going to the doctor and people going to the endocrinologist and seeing her for months, you know, and things like that. So, you know, because I started this in 2018, but I wasn't diagnosed until 2019 fully. I was diagnosed with suspicious uh, in December, uh, um, on December 31st of 2018, 
Um, but you, I didn't, you know, get my results until January the 8th, 2019, but I didn't find out it was malignant until July of 2019. So, wow. you know, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, malignant papillary with spread, you know, to lymph nodes and things like that. So, you know, what, yeah, what stage was it in by the time you... Able. They would never give me a stage. Yeah. It was so hard for me to get them. Oh, we can't stage it until after it's removed. You know, so. Um, is that true? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't feel like that is. Like everyone. When, when I started going to um, Moffitt Cancer Center, uh, because, you know, I got referred out um, from her. And then when I started going there, after I had already did the lymph node biopsy because I'm like, let me try something different. I didn't want to go through who they were going through. But again, it's all connected. Your name is all connected to the same price tag. They are, they work together. It's like they're a union. They're going to stick together. They communicate. They were communicating. The doctor who did um, my biopsy, the needle got stuck in my neck. So it, and he ended up having to yank it out of my neck as he's holding my head down. So it turned out that he actually used a, a larger gauge needle than what she had recommended. So, you know, there's like 22 gauge, 18 gauge, you know, different gauges when you're doing a biopsy. Mm -hmm. So the needle was stuck in my neck in the lymph node that was larger than the nodule on my thyroid. So I started bleeding, like as he's doing a biopsy, you know, before I found out it was malignant, he had to do a lymph node biopsy. During that biopsy, the needle got stuck in my neck. I could feel everything. I kept telling him, you're not in the right place. I'm not numb. I was crying. The nurses were like holding my hand and, you know, I was bleeding a lot. And you can tell with them looking at one another that he wasn't doing something right. And this is an experienced, you know, radiologist at the hospital, wow. you know, so it, that's, that's what I'm telling you. Every single situation that happened to me, it was like, what in the hell is really going on? Because yeah. I just felt like I was living in a, like in, a, in the twilight zone. It was because it was like, I can't have this much bad luck. I know that I've been a very good person to, to people throughout my lifetime. I have tons of people who can second that. You know, and just I like I don't wish bad on people. I don't gossip. I'm not a you know dishonest person. Um, like it's you know I've always helped my family, so I'm like okay. So I of course I'm gonna have better luck than the last doctor or the doctor after that. Yeah. So I went to um to him and like and then I still had to drive my kids home from the hospital, which I was like crying and you know, in pain. So it left a hole open in my lymph node for months, mm -hmm. the large gauge, which I was told that that can allow cancer to spread. When you have an open lymph node that is cancerous, it can cause things to spread more. And I told my husband, like, this doesn't feel right. It's something, it's something, it doesn't feel right. You know, and when I told the doctor who, you know, told me through the text, she was saying, just get the surgery, just get the surgery right away, just get the surgery, you know, after I had to go up there and check her ass, like, this is not how you treat people, you don't tell people they have cancer through a messaging system, I don't care if it's connected to the doctor's office or what, if I ask you to bring me in person, bring me in in person, this is a very big deal for me and my family. Yeah, that is the most inhumane thing, and I mean, that I have all the text messages. I would love to share the videos right. with you and all the text messages where you can see like, wow, I mean, the screenshots. Could, yeah. I mean, off camera, I would love, we could dive in more. That is, I mean, it's bad enough to be told that you're diagnosed with just like hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. And, you know, any sort of a diagnosis is like, it's like taking a hit, but that's the scariest diagnosis you can be told and the inhumanity of that. I mean, I'm glad you went and checked her ass. Like, holy shit. She better uh, yeah. never do that and, to any other woman. Yeah. And I, I, cause I was, oh. yeah. And that's why, you know, and then it led for me to go look for another doctor 
So then I found an endocrinologist at the cancer center who then referred me to the um, doctor who was going to do my surgery. And then it it turned like, okay, this shit is going to blow your mind, okay? Oh like, I, I should have made some tea. Uh, right? I should have made right, some tea. I got time. I don't know if they have any questions or anything, because I know it's a <laughs> long story. Hi, if anybody's if anybody's chimed in or have any questions, but That's this is, true. this is so true. So I went to, um, I went and got everything done. I got the ultrasound. And so they come back and say, well, you actually have cancer worse on the right than on the left. You have 60 lymph nodes infected. We're going to have to remove, um, uh, yeah, they said I had 60 lymph nodes infected and that they were going to have to move 100 lymph nodes. So, you know, I was going to a cancer research center. So I was, so I said, no, I don't want to be a part of that. So the, you know, the doctor, you know, had told me and I said, that's impossible. I just got an ultrasound and I only had seven lymph nodes on this side. There were no effect infected um, lymph nodes on this side. I Nothing on my hundred. <laughs> nothing at all oh was gosh. I had no cancer on this side no lymph nodes nothing everything was right here and the last ultrasound that I had 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 seven or eight you know enlarged lymph nodes on top of the thyroid okay so so I told so I started telling them I said well um can I see like you know the date and time because you know they can I don't know, there's like a way around things where they can kind of manage things, but I just didn't believe it. I felt, I had felt bad about it. So, um, not like a bad gut feeling about that being true. Yeah. So I, I so I asked her if I can um, come in and speak to her alone and, um, we spoke. And so I asked her, I said, so why do you do this? Do you do, are you a surgeon because you love your job or do you do it for the money? You know, you know, just <laughs> asking questions. Yeah. And she didn't give me a direct answer. She gave me a question with a question. You know, she answered the question with a question. And she says, she sat back and said, well, why do you ask that? Okay, that's a red flag because you should be able to answer that. The person who ended up doing my surgery, Dr. Clayman at the Clayman Thyroid Center, mm -hmm. he was able to answer that very quickly mm -hmm. when I asked the same question. So I have what you call a happy face. Um, yeah, incision yeah. from there to there. Here, I don't know if my camera is a little. I get yeah. I mean, it just looks like a, a darker line. Hold on, let me. Let me just... Because you know it's all. This is crazy. I knew her story was going to be nuts, but I didn't know it was going to be like this. This is yeah, and I'm sorry, guys. That, Alicia that it... says your story is mind blowing. I know it is. And it's all 100% true. Yeah. And she said earlier that that's, that's true. Not a lot of people know what a thyroid is or even what its function is. Yeah. But she's going like this, this emoji with mind blowing all caps, 20 exclamations. I know. Yeah. Uh, see, I knew you needed to share. But hold on. Oh, it's, no. That's not the issue. I know. I'm, <laughs> I was, I'm sorry, y'all, because I don't like drama. So the fact that I have to repeat it, actually, I don't like it, you know? Thank you. But, um, uh, like, I definitely don't tell, like, my friends and family, like, the details of everything that I've gone through, again, because I don't like to, you know, spread bad news or share bad news. Yeah. But, um. I don't so think, we, I wouldn't look at it as sharing bad news. I think what we're doing right now is we're 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 spreading awareness. Yeah. That's the that's that's what this is is we're helping to strengthen other women through our stories. Absolutely. Yeah. So okay, so when I started I'm going to the cancer center um and I spoke to the surgeon who was going to do my surgery. Uh, when she came to the appointment, she was almost an hour late. She had her makeup smudged over her eyes. Her hair was like, like she had just woken up. Like and hungover? <laughs> yes, yes. That's why I had asked her to meet up with, you know, to have another meeting with me because, you know, they were trying to get me to do um, 
another CAT scan and I didn't want to do it. And I said, no, I want an MRI because I know even with an ultrasound or an MRI, you can see cancer. Guys, yeah. uh, with the biopsies and CAT scans, those are not good for your body because if you have cancer, they can very well see the cancer cells on an ultrasound. It looks like little sparkly stars and on an MRI. So, you know, I... I recommend that before you ever allow someone to stick a needle in any part of you to biopsy you, you do get an MRI or further imaging. If they're saying thyroid cancer, ask for a PET scan. If your insurance doesn't pay for it, ask, well, how much does it cost out of pocket? You know, and what kind of payment arrangements could you make before you let them stick a needle in you or inject you with any type of anything that may offset your body mm -hmm. and if you are low in iodine and then you get that dose or if you're high in iodine and you get that dose but you know they're not going to tell you if you're deficient in iodine mm -hmm. you know uh, and what that can cause for your body mm -hmm. if you don't have that protecting you, mm -hmm. you so um just to, i'm sorry i kind of get all over the place no i love that you said that i really resonate with that about the iodine Right. Yeah, because and iodine is very important and people do not put enough emphasis on iodine. Mm -hmm. Our salt is, um, you know, if you're not if you ionized, use, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. the, the bread, like everything that used to have iodine in it back in the day that protected us, they've taken it out. Mm -hmm. And then you have to go and pretty much get the iodine if you eat seafood. If you don't, that, that may be a problem, you know, because you're only, you know, getting your iodine from seafood if you're only eating sea salt or, you know, this, the Morton salt where you have to read and it says this product does not contain, you know, a much, you know, essential needed Mineral. nutrient. Yeah. yeah. It, but if you don't read it and you just go, I'm just getting table salt. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I always promote Celtic sea salt or pink Himalayan. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. <laughs> One second. We're saying that. Do you hear that, guys? Yes, it's, it's, it's important to share your stories. Knowledge is power. Yes, I will tell yeah, you. Yeah, this is my favorite, okay? I, I love this, Sarah. Oh, amen, sister. That is but what I, I said. Yep. But I have, I have so many things, though. But it took me to educate myself. And ladies, yep. if you are going through things, please let your body lead you to whatever direction that you are going to go to. Don't let the doctors tell you that they know what you are going through, because if they haven't gone through it, then they really don't understand, yeah. you know, and part of being a um, physician or, you know, um, they're basically practicing. They're, you know, like... It, they're basing your case off the last case that they worked on or the or the bulk cases that they may have worked on with somebody with hypothyroid or hyperthyroid when you your body is going to tell you everything it needs from vitamin d to iodine if you don't crave it if you're craving beans or meat or certain things you know iron or you know your body will tell you what it needs just like when you're pregnant when you have cravings that's your body alerting you like hey it's Baby. something mm -hmm. it's something in here that you need mm -hmm. that's why you know? you're gonna go eat a whole watermelon right now <laughs> right that's what I used to do <laughs> and see me I craved bean burritos and you know because I was I was I started going into anemia you know you know like being anemic and iron deficient and things like that and that's why I was always wanting to eat beans and you know and unfortunately um my last pregnancy um, leading up to my diagnosis because um, when I got diagnosed with the hyperthyroidism, my baby was only a few months old. So I was deficient in iodine. Mm -hmm. And I, with her, you know, I, went, I had a high risk pregnancy, you know, I was already in my thirties, you know, um, I, you know, I went through a lot of things to where I did have those deficiencies and vitamin D deficiency. And, you know, it all plays roles together. So Amen. The nutrient, vitamin, and mineral deficiencies are the number one. That's that's your road to sickness. If you're not keeping up with your hormones and your deficiencies, 
Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, and of course, sleep, water, sun, mm-hmm. fresh air, you know. Love, happiness. <laughs> yeah, like they don't tell you what you need to have a strong immune system. So you kind of got to, you know, have the mind to go after it for yourself. Yeah. Um, but moving forward with the story with Moffitt, um, with the cancer center, s- throughout that um, time, I was scheduled to have surgery to have a, um, at the time, so they weren't going to do this kind of incision. They said I needed a ear to shoulder incision on both sides, and then I needed across the neck. Very extensive surgery. Oh, yeah. And okay, so... Oh, oh. Um, Say that again. I, Alicia says, yes, it's important to share your stories. Knowledge is power. And sometimes you have to be an advocate for your own health. Yeah. Yeah, you have to. Not just your, sometimes, all, all the, the time. time. <laughs> yeah, all the time. <laughs> I know. No. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you do. Because, because you don't know what people are going through when they go home. And that can actually take away from the care that they give to you. And if they're having a lot of stress, like the excuses that my doctor gave to me to why she um, sent through a text that I had cancer and wasn't, she said, well, I, I, I'm, I'm working all the time. I'm, I'm the only doctor here, you know, that's working all the time. She blamed it on being tired, being, you know, overworked to why she just basically didn't have that care factor to let me know, like as a human, like to bring me in, you know, as you know, like they don't, you don't know what they're going through to why they give you little, but they're still making money off of your insurance and off of you, even if they're not giving you the care that you deserve. Yeah. So, um, we started going through, I was scheduled for September of, um, 20, 2020 to have my surgery as soon as, like, just a few months after being scheduled and something told me to cancel. So I moved it back um, for a couple of months, which then led into, you know, going into coronavirus in that March. But before then they said, okay, well, you're going to have to get a new doctor because Dr. So-and-so is no longer with us. So my surgeon who told me that I had, you know, outrageous spreads, yeah. She then got fired. The hospital got busted for fraud. It's on the, it was on the news. Oh. They had been exchanging DNA with China. What? Under the table, oh, accepting they had accounts in China. Um, yeah, you can Google this right now. Like you can look this up. I'm not going to right now, but I got to see. This is nuts. Uh, okay. Or so they, actually DM me after and just tell me the name. <laughs> we don't need to put it out there. Yeah. So they, okay, so it was a lot of them. They all got busted at this cancer center. It was, like I said, it was on the news. So it, I mean, it was a federal case. Wow. You know, Trump basically had investigations at MD Anderson, Moffitt Cancer Center, John Hopkins. He went under, he, he, he uh, put an investigation to make sure everybody was doing what they need to do with the money. Come to find out they had been accepting taxes um, under the table from tobacco companies, this cancer center from tobacco companies, what? tobacco that causes cancer. Oh, the head God. of the cancer center was fired. My doctor who told me I had abnormal spread, which I did not. <laughs> and it was later confirmed by my new replacement doctor, which was the head and neck, which, which was the chief of the head and neck surgery department in this hospital. He told me, disregard everything she ever told you. We're gonna get you a new ultrasound. We're gonna get you everything. She's no longer with us. You know, they, nobody wanna discuss anything. Even when I'm like, well, is anybody gonna discuss the fact that this woman just blatantly lied to me and had I had surgery in September, she would have took out way more because they were selling human tissues under the table to China. And these doctors all had overseas accounts with more than $30,000 in them. Um, They let go about 12 people from this hospital. This was last year. I just don't even know what to say right now. This is so sick and sad. I followed my spirit and everything, everything that told me something wasn't right. Yeah. 
my husband thinks I'm a witch. <laughs> I love your intuition and that your connection to it. It literally saved your life. Probably that is amazing. It, it, it wow. definitely gave me a better quality because imagine at 30, you know, yeah. five years old, getting ear to ear incision to my shoulders and, you know, everything taken out with sicknesses and sinuses and, you know, things that can happen when you don't have your lymph nodes your lymph and the are swelling. Such a huge part of even your immune system. Yeah. Oh. And that's why they were making money. And that's why I knew it when I asked that woman, what are you doing this for? You know, and when you sit back and can't answer, like, you know, like if somebody asked me something, you know, you can answer a question you know, and when my kids answer a question with a question, I don't go for that. So I'm not going to go for it when an adult that's about to put me under for six hours, answer it, you know, so I, so I followed my heart. Um, I ended up leaving that place. I got a better insurance and I went to the thyroid, a, a, speci a thyroid specific only cancer center only. Okay. I didn't go to a a cancer center that's doing, you know, breast cancer, thyroid cancer, pancreatic. I went to something that focused on the problem that I had, which was thyroid cancer and infected lymph nodes. And I know that I was led to him because before I was ever diagnosed with cancer, I would just YouTube videos. I had already been following this man on YouTube and didn't even know he was in Tampa. Mm. You know, look. I'm, oh, I'm so, look at those goosebumps. I'm because like, that's how wow. that you know, I did. I didn't even know I would just be looking at the videos on, you know, his surgeries and things like that. You were that's excited how, to his videos and he was right in your town. Yep. And so when I started looking and I'm like, claiming thyroid center is in Tampa. You know, the, the, I told Matt, like my, you know, the person that I'm always showing you that I was following that thyroid center is in Tampa because it was one of the only ones in the United States. People come from all over the country to see him. And they actually told me when I got my surgery, like we don't normally see locals. We normally see like foreigners. It's normally people from other countries coming over because he's so like world renowned. Wow. They were willing to work with me. They even tried to, with my first insurance, um, they even tried to get an exception. They were like trying to, hey, we're going to give you a discount. We're going to waive your consultation of $1,000. If you have to pay cash, we're going to only charge you $18,000. They worked something out with the hospital where they could waive and minimize $5,000 off of the cost of the surgery. Mm -hmm. um, so I, that's when I had started to go fund me to try to, you know, get something because my insurance wouldn't even connect with them. So the insurance company sent me back uh, when I did the appeal, they sent it back and said they didn't deem my surgery medically necessary. So they denied going into the unit with Dr. Clayman. Mm. So I just changed to a PPO because they didn't take anything. They don't, they didn't, they don't take HMO. Mm. Well, I mean, I changed to a POS, um, which is point of service, meaning you don't need any referrals. You can go to any doctor anywhere. And, you know, because I have kids. I can't let y'all be playing games with my goddamn life and y'all, you, know, you know? Yeah, I just felt like what you just said on the insurance company too, it's just another layer of that corruption and the fact that you finally find like help and they deny you. Exactly, you know? they only exactly. They you in that sick and twisted system because you're yeah, part and of it. And that, so you started to go fund me. How did that go? Yeah, it didn't go very good. I didn't really have the support that I needed, but it's okay. Um, the money that I did use, I just used it for the natural treatments that I had been doing. Um, you know, I did a lot of things in a process of waiting for my surgery. I made sure I did colonics. I was doing lymphatic drainage, you know, um, acupuncture. Oh, nice. Um, you know, just bettering, you know, just, just investing it into... Nicole, mm -hmm. because I'm not just going to be sitting waiting and allowing my cancer to spread and people to just feed me bullshit, you know, like, no, like, what can I do? I want to make sure my lymphatic is pushing out any cancer cells that it, that are being killed or dying off because I'm boosting my immune system and, you know, balancing my, you know, levels and things like that and depriving it of sugar and, you know, things that it wants. You know, I started, um, 
meditating, you know, I, you know, I got very connected with stones and, and things like that. And, um, Love it. you know, I, you know, I just kind of started doing more spiritual healing because that's mental and spiritual is going to be where it starts, mm -hmm. you know, because you can have anything develop in your body. But if you still have the same toxic environment as far as emotions, then it's going to still thrive. Even if you get it removed, it's going to thrive it, or it'll come back. Yeah. So, no, you know, knowing the mental part of it, which I've shared with you, you know, mm -hmm. and I didn't really start having the more up and downs until after the radioactive iodine after surgery, mm -hmm. you know, but um, I had the, th the cancer removed and um in March this this year it took you know a while because um the insurance wouldn't had us wait until new enrollment before we can update the plan in order for me to go to him so that's why I continued on with doing my things at home with teas and um herbs and you know the things that I mm -hmm. have a deeper belief in in the world yeah you know um you know I I feel like I was in good hands when I went to have my surgery, it was so many people around me and everybody was very attentive. It was like, it was a lot of love. Like before I got put under, cause I had a six hour surgery. Mm. And when I got put under, um, you could just see everyone. It was like, so it was like 12 people in the room, you know, like wow. you could tell like, this is a big deal, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, during surgery, they said that my heart started having issues. So um, it caused me to be in post-op for another five hours. Coming out of surgery, my blood pressure was 200. Ooh, it scary. was at 200. So they thought that, yeah, they said it was because I'm really small and that my body it was just a lot of trauma for my body. Oh. But it you know, it, 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 you know, it got, it got pretty scary because they thought that I was going to go into cardiac arrest. Wow. And so they had even, you know, went and told my husband, you know, my husband, he was in the waiting room, like crying, waiting for me because now I'm not out of surgery after six hours. Now he can't see me until, you know, 11 hours later. And they and were prepping him for the fact that you could have a heart attack and die. Yeah. They told him that they ran into some issues with my heart. Oh my gosh. How he was in the waiting room and it was time for him to leave because it was COVID. And so the, during the COVID hours, you know, they weren't actually allowing visitors to stay at the hospital at a certain point. This is before Delta. This was the, you know, during the first, you know, this was in March. So they were like, no, like the hospital visitation ends at this time. Mm. So they end up letting him stay until eight o'clock PM because, you know, I didn't even get out, out of there for a while. Wow. But I woke up smiling like the, the doctors were like so surprised to see that I, that I even had a smile on my face because of everything that was going on when I was under and because yeah. of the extensiveness of the surgery. They told me that they don't normally do cases this extensive. Like they haven't had as many cases where it's a incision from over here to over here. They normally have like partial thyroidectomies, mm. you know like where the incision is right here, you know, or something small. So wow. they were just really surprised to see that I was like back up and at it, I guess, um, mm -hmm. coming out of my uh, anesthesia. And I was just, I, I don't know what was wrong with me. I guess I was high on the drugs that they <laughs> put on me, but I was just like smiling. The lady across from me in the bed, you know, in the recovery room, she was crying. She had obviously just woken up from surgery. So I started talking to her across the thing and I was just like, and I, and I just said, everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. And I think and the nurses were looking like, like, you just got out of surgery too, you know, like, Aww. yeah, and I was telling her cause I felt her, you know, I felt her emotions. And I said, I just put, I just set up and I said, everything's going to be okay. You know, she was looking at me. I don't, you know, I don't know if, if, you know, I still think, you know, I don't know if she like thinks about me, if that helped her or what, but wow. it, it was so, it was crazy. So the doctor, you know, when they were releasing me, they kept me for an extra day just to monitor me. Um, but when they were releasing me, she said, when you woke up, you were just so happy. Like 
you know, Dr. Roy and Dr. Clayman were not used to seeing that upon waking people up from anesthesia from a six hour total thyroidectomy. Wow. I mean, is, um, have you, you've been through so much trauma mm -hmm. from the system. First of all, I'm so sorry you had to endure that. I think because of your strength, maybe that was a trial that you were a, that you were supposed to go through to endure because you could handle it. You know, it's like, we're never given something we can't handle. Right. And even though it was probably extremely hard, I mean, not probably it was, it obviously was extremely hard. Um, you did a, phen a phenomenal job navigating yourself through it. I mean, the way you stepped up to everyone. And you kept I had to, because I have yeah. to look at my kids and they wake up so happy to see me every morning. Yeah. And, and um, you know, I can't let anybody else dictate my days, you know, if I'm not willing to do the education and also the, the groundwork to mend whatever trauma that I had that caused the disease in the first place. Mm. So it's probably... It may be a little too soon. I don't know. But what kept coming up to me for me was, have you started the forgiveness process towards all those doctors and all those people and that whole system? Um, I feel like there's going to be a forgiveness process that you're going to have to go through for that in order to get that trauma out of you. Have you felt that at all? Well, I never, um, I didn't have, like, I don't, I don't need forgiveness for them. I didn't, I didn't develop any hate towards them because I understand the system. Oh, I know. Okay. So I, like, my heart doesn't allow, like, I don't know. It's so weird. <laughs> like, let me, let, let me see the best way to explain it. Like, I don't hold hate for people or like, um, not like, I'm not naive or anything. I don't make excuses for people, but I understand when people are up against things as far as like did I I did not understand the whole telling me that things had traveled when they hadn't but if you're deal if you but if you put yourself in the shoes of somebody who may be a con artist or m money driven I've never been a money dr driven person like I like money I like fancy things I like nice things but I, but throughout my life I've supported so many people financially and never wanted anything back in return. And so if, essentially, if I'm giving, I'm losing, if I'm not receiving in return. Mm -hmm. So I understand in her shoes, she was a part of something fraudulent. That was who she was as a person. That's something she's going to have to deal with. I can't give forward hate because karma has already put her, you know, on, on the list. So, you know, it's not a forgiveness for me. It's she's going to deal with her own karma. And then I don't think about it. I can talk about my experiences, but I don't think about any of them. I don't think about any of them in like a hateful manner, other than the fact that doctors and, you know, people that are in the system, they have, they make oaths, they have jobs, you know, they can't say certain things. They can't give you certain you, you know certain information like a doctor can't say oh yeah well don't eat sugar it feeds cancer mm -hmm. you know like i i've already understood where these people stood in their lives and the in the positions that they chose to go into so it was never a situation where i have to forgive them with anything it's just knowledge is power you know i know that i just have to be more responsible for myself and not let someone just be so quickly to diagnose me with things and just fall for it without doing my own research or getting a second or third opinion wow what an amazing outlook i'm so glad you have that yeah, because I love that. The like the visualization that came to mind when you were saying it's like you just handed it over. You're like, here you go, universe. Like this is yours to deal with. And I know you will. And yeah. obviously but you already that's are. That's not on me. That's on me. Yeah. And <laughs> you know how to treat right. people. Look, that's karma. you know, like karma is you know, and even like with this, like this could be something connect to a past life of a karmic debt that's being paid, you know, like you just never know like why you're put on the path that you're on, you know? <laughs> so, but what I gathered from why I went through thyroid cancer was because at that time that I started going through that, yes, the x-rays or the CAT scans, you know, back to back within a certain year because I had had my wisdom teeth pulled. So I had 
x-ray. I had had, you know, other stuff. So I had, you know, so before I had that CAT scan and x-ray in that day, throughout that year, I had already had imaging twice. So that just means I had it four times in a year, which is dangerous for your cells. And 5% of people that are diagnosed with or that have thyroid problems, the problems are brought on or can be brought on from radiation exposure. So I absolutely agree with you on that, that that could have yeah. been your trigger, your environmental trigger. But yeah. what set forth the environment for the trigger to allow, you know, for the, you know, maybe that was the match, but if there was already gasoline, yeah. then what do you think is going to happen? So wh what I gathered from it is because I, thyroid is connected to the throat chakra. Mm -hmm. it, it, it can come about from people who lie, people who aren't being themselves people who aren't speaking truthful things and not necessarily lying when I say truthful, but honest thoughts or not saying it at all, you know? So um, when I got diagnosed, I had fell into, I'm, I'm sorry, before I got diagnosed, I had fell into a life of pretending to be somebody I wasn't for my husband and, and his family because mm. me being black, they didn't like me. So I was speaking different. I was dressing different. Mm. I wasn't speaking my mind when they would say stuff like racial things. I would just like be over there like, okay, I'm ready to go. Like, but normal Nicole would be like, um, excuse me. Like, mm. no, don't, don't be on that shit with me. Like, you know, but, and it start building up, mm. you know, like I started, um, like, um, I remember when I first met his aunt and his uncle, his uncle goes, oh, you're not, he, yo, you're, you're really pretty, but you're not as ghetto as everybody said, you know, and I remember, like, I, when I look back at my pictures, like, my smiles and, did, like, oh, that's not, that wasn't me, like, I'm way more fun than that, I would go around his family, I wouldn't drink, and I, and, and I would drink, but I wouldn't feel comfortable enough, because it was, like, judgy, it was, like, be, they didn't want, you know, like, I basically changed the dynamics of their family, you know, um, and they made sure that they let me know that they didn't like it. So at that time, I was going through a lot of stuff with racism. I was being called niggers by his aunt, only to find out that that's how they just addressed me, even though we've been together for eight years and tomorrow's our four year wedding anniversary. Hmm. You know, um, which they didn't come to not one family member showed up out of all his family to our wedding you know and Sorry. I just I just know that I would I wasn't myself I wasn't speaking my truth and even sometimes to him you know like and you know in fear of being rejected or neglected for being a certain way you know it's like okay if I want to um be myself and like I don't know it's weird it's almost like his sisters they pretend to act black but then you know if I'm being myself, I'm basically too black for their comfortability. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I would still be just every holiday event or every time we went to his family, you know, he would just only have a beer and I wouldn't have anything, but I would be wanting to, you know, like, you know, have fun, get up, dance, but how I dance and how they dance, it was different. Or they always had something to say about how I dressed or my hair or weave and, you know, oh, you always like, um, you're always dressed so fancy and all this. You always try to outdo everybody. And with me, I was like, I was thinking I was just being myself. But then I started changing. Oh. I started wearing like, I don't know, like Betty Crocker type dresses and like just kind of, you know, not speaking. You know, I, when we were pregnant with our second um, daughter, I remember his grandma saying like, oh, you're pregnant again. What is, what a dumb girl. And at that time I was 30, 33 years old. Wow. And guess what? I didn't say anything at all. I just was like, okay. But the normal me would have been like, like, for, you know, I would have checked her. I would have said something, but I let my relation and that, that made me that, that, you know, came to a toxic environment, added on to childhood traumas from psychological issues. At the time, my, my father, who I thought was my father, had passed away in 2000 and, um, in 2014, I mean, 15, when I was pregnant with my six-year-old. So it was his death, which we didn't have a connection, and 
I felt bad about not being able to get the answers that I needed from him, mm. you know, followed by just relationship problems because of, you know, you know, my husband at that time living in a different state. He lived in California. I lived in Florida. You know, the long distance, the stuff, toxic, the pregnancies, mm. emotional, unbalanced, to that's a toxic environment when you're, you know, yep. you know, um, then I led into his ex-girlfriend harassing me for being black and always messaging my phone and calling me black dogs and just, you know, like, you know, it was, I was going through a time where I wasn't speaking out and I was also being just bullied and I wasn't taken up for myself. And the normal Nicole takes up for everybody, including myself myself first. So I feel like that's where my thyroid cancer came from, even though it was triggered by other stuff. It came from me wow. holding and festering in who I truly was to try to make other people happy. Wow. Yeah. Because I know for women, it's very, very normal for us to hold a lot of attention, a lot of our attention in our throat. And if you, if you ask women, where do they feel their anxiety? Where do they feel their, uh, you know, like everything yeah. it, they, everyone will say in their throat and you're right. That throat chakra is, it's very powerful. And for you to be muffling and suppressing yourself, that's, mm -hmm. you pushed it all down, you suppressed it, suppressed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I did because I didn't uh, want to disrespect him. And then at the same time, or his family, because like I said, his grandma, I mean, she's like almost 80, you know, and his mom is like, you know, you know, like I didn't want to cause it. I, I don't know. I didn't want to cause the separation that we have now, but I had to be content with understanding that being yourself is the only way which he's more in love with me being myself than he was when I was, you know, being Betty Crocker, you know, like dressing like that you know because yeah. I'm like you know what I'm going to go buy me a halter top I'm going to H&M I'm getting my <laughs> daisy duke like I'm not changing yeah. like you know like <laughs> when I, I start being myself is when you know I started to heal on the inside but not just his family you know also you know like I said family my family you know I came from a family that I had to support more than anything financially and then guess what? I would just be quiet and just to have them around me, you know, I would give them what they want. Hey, can I borrow $600? Nick, can I borrow this? Can I borrow that? Oh, sure. Here you go. Here you go. Although who I truly am was too much for them. It was, you know, it can be too much for my mom, too much for my siblings, you know, because I'm a very honest and blunt person. And that has a lot to do with my Aries Ram symbol. <laughs> Yeah. but you know um I know that people could not handle that at times so I just wouldn't say things when people are wrong or if I see something that's not right it's like I wasn't speaking up and I was accepting a lot from a lot of people especially like my family before his oh. so it was trauma added to already you know mental and emotional trauma of ex trying to be accepted I was always trying to be accepted by my family and it didn't have anything to do with my race it had something to do with just my personality on um being an honest person and not being a gossiper and things like that whereas to they may be very dishonest they're gossiping or negative people and it was like I would be overly positive overly optimistic and that almost drove people away from me wow shocking you know, this is such a beautiful silver lining. I, I talk about this. I don't, I, I guess I'm not talking about this enough, but I know from my own experience and obviously from everything you just shared that your silver lining was coming back to unapologetically being <laughs> you, yep. you need to be you. And you had to literally go through Oh, almost having all of that suppression removed. Yep. And it could have cost, but it could have cost me my life. Letting other people dictate the way that you live and who you are as a person, wow. your mind, what you say, how you speak, you know, it would be the smallest things that would trigger distance between my family and I and, and um, 
my mom has seven children and my brother and I, we share the same father, which I just met throughout this cancer journey. I just met my real dad because wow. I told you my other father, who I thought was my dad, turned out he wasn't my dad. All, all I've ever known my whole life, you know, passed away, went to, I spoke at the funeral, everything, but I felt, I followed my spirit. I felt the disconnection. I felt that it wasn't right. And I had felt that for years. You know, I went on a journey to do the BRCA testing, the DNA testing, you know, because they were telling me that the thyroid cancer could have been genetic. And I'm like, no, it wasn't. So don't try to put that shit on my medical records to make it work into y'all's favor so that it doesn't show that it's caused by radiation, you know, like, so let me go and do this. So then I end up finding my real dad, who was my brother's dad all along. Hmm. And we're a year apart. He's 38, I'm 37. And we were like this. But then I come to realize that we were only like this because I also did what they all wanted me to do. You know, all of my siblings, I always, you know, when they were wrong, I made it as if they did no wrong, even if I knew that they were wrong. So I started getting to the point where it's like, you know, they would want me to lie for them. And I'm going to give you a like an example, but this is a true story. <laughs> like when he would meet certain women, he has three children and he would only say he had like one child or something. And if I posted a picture of my other nieces or something, he would call me, hey, can you take that down? Because he wouldn't want his new girlfriend or something to know he had more than one child or something, you know? So I was like, okay, I'll take it down. You know, like no problem, brother. You know what I'm saying? Instead of saying no, like I have more than one niece. That's my DNA. I'm allowed to post them on my social media and if I want to, or um, if I, you know, he would get mad if someone spoke the truth uh, to this girl, like, oh, well, I don't know how she found out I got other kids, you know, and I would be like, well, maybe, you know, like, I'm not, I'm not your keeper. When you realize that you even holding lies for other people can fester disease in your body, I had to have a full awakening of becoming who I truly was, not, not worrying about what ties it had to cut, what bridges it had to burn, what separation I had to take away from people, whether blood relation or, you know, married into the family or anything. If you're not, you know, leading with love, respect, honesty, then I don't need to have you around me because I can do that easily. That's not something that I have to force myself to do. Like, I don't have to con myself into not gossiping about people. I can just not do it. You know, yeah. like I can just Easy. not think about people, you know, like in, an, in a bad way. Like I'm not the person that says, oh, don't give that bum money. He put himself there. I'm going to say it's not my business how he ended up there. If I have the money to help him, I'm going to give it to him. Yeah. I don't care if I get blessings in return. All I care is that he's going to get him something to drink, whether it's a beer or a bottle of water. It's whatever that's pleasing that man that's on the corner. That's not for me to judge or for me to say on what he does with the money that I willingly donate to him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I think this is a beautiful place to wrap it up. I, I mean, your full circle has been incredible to listen to. And the fact that you've gone through so much suppression for so yes. long it's like I just feel like I want to say like welcome to being you Nicole welcome yeah, back you. and it feels good welcome I see you I feel you I'm glad to know you I think you're beautiful I feel your shine I see your goddess and middle fingers up to the haters okay <laughs> all right so um Thank you, Nicole, so much for sharing everything today. It was, I mean, I almost don't even have words for your, your everything, but I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for what you have realized about yourself and about your inner divinity and your own beauty and letting yourself be you and how yes. absolutely important that is for us to honor ourselves and yes. always, always be you. Don't compare yourself to other people. Don't compete with other people. Don't be jealous. Just really love yeah. you. 
and stick up for yourself and don't let people suppress you or bully you ever. So I am, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for asking me to, you know, like. Yeah, I know. It was yeah, because I, I, was, I was nervous at first and I know we didn't get to really touch on things because it was such a long story, too much for the amount of time yeah. to where we didn't really get into the radioactive iodine treatment well, that I, you know, we, we can, can have another. Okay, well, we can we, do a part two. Yeah, we can. So, I'll, I'll be glad to do that with you. But yeah, it's definitely been great. And for anybody who want to learn more about the throat chakra, please look that up because it will let you know what the imbalance of having, you know, your throat chakra blocked causes and the different diseases and the different reasons that you could have it, you know, because everything, we're all electric and, you know, everything is internal, mentally and emotionally. Absolutely. All right, everyone, if you found this story and episode valuable, please leave a comment below. I know Nicole would love to hear your feedback. I would love to hear your feedback. Please like, subscribe, share this with a friend, anyone you know that needs to hear this. I'm sure there's a lot of you out there. So we've got to share, educate, support each other and our communities. Um, and I'm always looking for volunteers to come on and help strengthen our community, strengthen our sisterhood. So please, if you are feeling called to do this, mm -hmm. DM me anytime, or you can email me at coachsharejoy number one at gmail.com. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.